Well, hey, welcome to another edition of the Diversified Semantic Player Podcast. Long time no see. This is Eric, joined by my stalwart compatriots, Jamie Oswald and Greg Myers. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Howdy. Well, that's a pretty blue shirt you got there. Pretty bright. Kind Thank of you. blinding. Uh, what's new with you guys? I, I don't know. Have you guys seen Stormtrooper Me yet? Just curious. No. No? What is it? <laughs> they, they had this thing where they'll put your face on a, um, a Star Wars character. Yeah, I'm a stormtrooper now. It's pretty striking resemblance, I think. Too much hair. It sounded a lot more esoteric when you said it, like, you know, it was an effective place to be a stormtrooper. But... No. What about you guys? I asked the question and I jumped right into me. It was pretty selfish. Uh, what's happening in the world? Just... Uh... You know, trying to get ready for the end of the calendar year. Make sure everything's moving along so it can sit still for three weeks while everybody's out of the office. <laughs> Quick, how do we find things for people to do in the last three weeks of the year? <laughs> yeah. Ah, community news. I, I see the call for presentations is out for ASOG Annual Conference. It is. I believe that there is an option for submitting a BI abstract, so maybe if we put in enough abstracts, we'll get some really good ones selected. I just don't feel optimistic about that. I know. Oh. Did you guys see there's a thread on Bob about which conference to go to? No. Uh, Sabak or, um, or ASUG Annual Conference or IBIS or BI whatever. I think it's you know, random plug here. Put S A B O U C with Tech Ed. Thanks. Thanks, they said. Um, sorry. BI twenty fifteen, March. Are you guys speaking? Yeah. Yes. We're actually gonna have a booth this year. First time. I'm pretty stoked. Nice. I think uh, Greg, Dallas, myself, and Ahmed. Am I missing somebody? Benjamin. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. You going, Jamie? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. no. Remember that last time we went? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a good one. it's a good conference. I mean, there's really good content. Um, it's really good content. A little bit quieter at night than some of the other conferences, so you get to, you get to hang out a little bit more. That was fun. Hmm. What about BI news? What's happening in the world? So, uh, the, I, I missed it. Did either of you guys see the, the latest um, analytics community call with uh, Appleby? Yeah, I watched some of it. It was, um, I mean, it's always interesting. Um, some of those calls are a bit, re you hate to say repetitive because it's always from a slightly different angle. Um, but it's still a lot of roadmap education, right, which SAP needs to do. You know, there are still a lot of people that don't understand how Lumira fits in. They don't understand what that means for the rest of their stack and things like that. Um, so I didn't get to see the whole thing. Um, I'm assuming they went through some of the more head-to-head -head versus Tableau stuff um, when I was off, but I think that's what... I think that's what everybody was interested in, and I'm not sure how much of that actually came through, so... Yeah, I got to go back and watch because that's one of the, the very questions I have. How are we to position Lumira against the tableaus of the world today? Like, where do they stand, feature to feature, um, deployment to deployment, that kind of thing? I'm hoping they've they've gone there. I got to watch it. Yeah, I think that'll be good. I think one thing SAP also still needs to work on is um, is getting a lot more pull from the business for it. So I think um, with Lumira, it's been a lot of pushing it internally from IT, right? So they they show it to the IT people and say, hey, this is great. You know, it's just as good as, as Tableau, which I, I personally do believe. Um, but the reason Tableau is successful is because 
business people are buying it, not because IT people are buying it. So I think I think there's a gap there where um, where business people start need to start pulling the interest in Lumira instead of just IT pushing it up. So I think seeing how SAP handles that will really drive a lot of the adoption going forward. Although I do get Lumira ads on Google uh, ads all the time. I don't know about you guys. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like they know me. They're watching me somehow in a weird way through my computer. Yeah, and I've already downloaded it, so SAP is wasting a ton of money on it. <laughs> I click it just for fun every time I see it. <laughs> First quarter guidance. Yeah. Greg, you gave a webinar this week too, right? Uh, the Mentor Monday? I did. What did you talk about? So we took a little different tactic on the Mentor Mondays this time. Um, and a couple of us talked you know, as much as we could. We talked about uh, some projects that we were working on. So Simon Toe laid out a project that he's working on is with some uh, location intelligent dashboards and um, I spoke about this monster BI4 rollout that we've been working on for oh, about a year now and how the, the complexities of a large environment like that. So it was interesting. That's a good question. BI4 or BI4.1? 4.1. And that's an interesting, an interesting segue. As I look at my uh, my calendar, that there's there's exactly uh, one year and fifteen days before XI three point one is end of life. What are my customers are looking at that thinking? Oh, crap! I don't think so. Um, <laughs> even. <laughs> My experience, even with the last version, too, has been that, you know, once customers are up and they're stable, they don't really care so much about end of mainstream support. They're like, eh, if we really need support, we'll drop a bunch of money and someone at SAP will talk to us, right? But I don't know. I just haven't seen this, this mass amount of panic about it. Yeah, I would love to see the chart where, you know, every time Apple releases a new iOS you get to see the chart that breaks down what version of iOS people are on, and it's always, you know, 85-plus percent of people are on whatever the newest one is, even a week after it's out. Um, I would love to see that chart for BI4 versions in terms of, you know, number of customers, how old their stuff is, how many users that are there, how many, you know, just I, I think that would be really difficult to put together and really fascinating to, uh, to sort of dig through. That would be... Actually, I would expect it to be sort of a mix. So just just from what I've seen, the the early adopters, um, God bless them, but um, the ones that came up on 4.0 and may even still be on 4.0, it was such a rough road that they're sort of gun shy on patches now. And once they got to a stable version, they're like, "Don't touch it." But the folks that are newer to it are going up on 4.1, and it's it's a vastly different experience. So it's more stable, it's faster, it's better, so it's, it's running it's clean. Okay. So and so that's even going from four O to four one, right? Or is that just from if you go on straight from XI three to four dot one? Um yeah, I mean four four O really for all intents and purposes has followed every other um, major business objects release, you know, that, that I've been around for. So the, the O, the dot O release is not so great. And once you get to the dot one, you're, you know, you're A-OK, -okay, you're stable. It's the dot O, oh, no, release. Yeah, the dot N, O. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, SAP. Well, they should uh, just release that one first. <laughs> so, you know, the, I think the other thing that's interesting is I mean, we already know 4.2 is going to come out sometime in 2015. But, but we've, we've kind of broken the long-standing cycle of that major, major release. Um, you know, I think we all know where that's going. Some, something not looking and smelling like BI4 down the road, right? It's 
got to be. It just has to be. I mean, even without getting totally, you know, server nerdy about it, the, the platform in its current state can only go so fast and do so much, right? We've been stretching it for years trying to make it do more, but the volume uh, of data that needs to be processed and the way that it needs to be processed is fundamentally changing, and it just... I don't see it being able to keep up. It has to shift. So, but will it look and feel different, or will it look and feel different to you guys, right? I mean, so will, will the user say, oh, I can do this one extra thing with Webby, or will it be more of another under-the-covers move, right? Because I feel like a lot of these big releases lately have been, you know, they've had incremental user-facing features, but it, it seems like every time it's been, you know, well, we're making this work with BW, we're making this work with SAP BI, we're making this, you know, quality, quality, quality. It's, you know, it, while the user experience has changed, um, I don't know how much longer SAP will be able to get away with just tuning the, the performance and optimizing the performance. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think... I think if it's done, you know, drop dead right, there there won't be any difference in the user experience. You'll be able to, well, there'll be a, a, an improvement in the user experience in that you'll be able to do everything you always wanted to do, you know, like bring eight million records into to Webby with all these merged dimensions and variables from eight separate data providers, and it'll work well. It'll work fast. You know, I, I think that those types of barriers are the things that have to go away, but just the mechanics of how it works. I mean, you're talking about driving like a Ferrari with a Model T, you know? So if you can change the engine underneath and make the experience better on the other end without fundamentally changing the way it works, that's that's the way, well, at least I think that's the way it should play out. But. You know, I think even on this show, we've talked about the fact that operational reporting as we know it today, somebody just consuming data isn't going to go away ever. But it's it's that the technology has finally caught up with the insatiable appetite of the analyst that just wants to chunk through bajillion rows of data. Um, and, and to that end, BI tools as we know it can't exist in the way they do, to your point, Greg. I mean, Things like HANA make that possible. Yeah, but they don't make it cheap. I mean, do we do we think that we're so obviously SAP has come a long way on HANA pricing and things, right? So versions of HANA that aren't exactly HANA are popping up for Lumira, you know, department version or whatever it's called, um, or Lumira Edge. Is that what it's called? Lumira Edge. Do we do we think SAP is going to start pushing that out to the rest of their stack, or or do we think that um, that will still be more? You've you've got to buy the whole kit and caboodle to move forward with some of that. You know, I don't really know. I, I think that um, you know, Lumira server. It itself, customers are just really starting to, to chip the surface on how they deploy it and how it integrates and, and you know, do they need to integrate it with their existing BI4 landscapes and, and how should it all look and feel. Um, and in that vein, one of you said something a moment ago that triggered a thought and that was that, you know, even they're starting down a path with the way visualizations and things like Lumira server work today and, and I hope that there aren't too many rapid shifts along the way as they work on how um, users consume information or create visualizations in Lumira server because it's one thing to say replumb the back end like they, they announced a couple weeks ago, right? They're going to change the way the plugin works and that impacts Greg. And that's fine. We can make those architectural shifts, but those are the kind of things that we can't do to users while we're trying to drive adoption of the new BI tools. Does that, does that make sense? 
Yeah, and I think it comes back to that tenet that, that's been tossed around for a while. Uh, you know, I think Adam Benning was the big champion of, of that, that you can expire tools, but you can't expire content. And, you know, I think that the content that's there, people have made a significant investment in it, in time and, and effort and, and maintenance, and it they depend on it, and it has to continue to work. It just needs to be able to work on the newer platforms with the newer technologies and hopefully work better and faster in the future because <laughs> it's not always optimal <laughs> the way things uh, end up being put into production. But. But that's, a, that's an interesting point, right? I mean, nobody wants to spend time. I mean, they can make Webby 100 times better, and nobody's going to go rewrite their income statement in the new Webby if they already have it in the old Webby, right? Nobody's going to go redo their balance sheet in the new Crystal if they already have it. I think... So I, I think that's a good point. So how do you – and that's that's honestly why I do like a lot of their strategy around that. You know, I think it's important to not get rid of the old reliable stuff because, you know, at the end of the day, finance people want to look – they want to run their month end in Excel. You know, they want to um, see their balance sheet in a very static format. You know, they don't want – what ifs in in that stuff, and so leave that stuff where it is, but add the ability to take the numbers on there and and make them come more alive, right? And so I think that's one thing that um, that SAP is moving towards with with a lot of their trusted um, data discovery, right? So you know have the governance that's involved in your universe or in your HANA semantic layer or your BW or whatever, but make it more agile through tools like Lumira and things like that. Um, but I, I think that there's still some more opportunity there, right, in making it more seamless. And honestly, the the worst thing in the, the world for any big technology company is just that, you know, they can, they can show something quick and we can hang them for not cannot show something until it's ready, and we can hang them for not having great ideas. You know, so it's it's really tough to to deliver at the speed of innovation um, that that they have, and you know, so good luck. <laughs> um. Oh wow, that was that was a lot. Sorry. We can break it up and post. Yeah. You know, you always say that. Um, it's your turn to start editing. Um, <laughs> sure, you going to go back? Um, all that is, is really makes what makes me wonder how SAP is going to accelerate all this roadmap and acceleration stuff that we've been seeing, preserve content, and get us to next gen BI tools. What is that? I don't know. It's got a sheep and a baguette on it, I think. <laughs> sheep one. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Um, In California. See, doesn't that look like a sheep holding a baguette? He's like. Yeah. 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 It, looks, it looks all Frenchy. <laughs> Timo, I need the translation. <laughs> it was just time. <laughs> or, oh, yeah, that's screaming for a meme. Uh, let's see what we can do with that later. Um, I totally forgot where I was going. Are we done? No. Uh, well, it, it's, it, that's, yeah, before the, the baguette sheep. Um, I mean, you posed a really interesting <laughs> question because I think fundamentally it, it it's you're talking about a total rewrite, really, a total rewrite of of how business objects works under the covers. Sorry, there's dog sniffing under my office door. It's a funny sound. <laughs> um, the sheep and he's. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> I hate to imagine what Corey Adams is doing right now. Oh no. This episode's full of cameos. <laughs> Boy. 
So, but I don't think that they can get away with rewriting the whole thing again, right? I mean, I that's my point. That's sort of the dilemma, right? I, it, it's it's not something you just pick up and put down. The only way it's going to work properly if it's if it's rewritten. But the risk of rewriting it is major. Nobody I mean, wants a web intelligence that does crystal reports, though, or vice versa. No, but yeah. if you're talking about a, a true Webby on HANA, right? That's uh, let's just say it. <laughs> you you can't. I don't. Last I checked, you you can't run C code on HANA. It, it's kind of just different, right? I mean, it works very differently. Yeah. We should actually probably get somebody from SAP to talk about it on the show, maybe. You sure? I'm happy to speculate forever and ever. Yeah. And <laughs> that's what they pay us for. Right. Will, they, will they actually talk to us anymore? <laughs> Are we Depends pundits? How many baguettes we give them? <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily a French company anymore. Um, <laughs> is that kind of a big deal in other parts of the planet? <laughs> oh. I think we're starting to come off the rails here. A little bit. This can't, this can't end up like the first Christmas episode. <laughs> Do you guys realize that was four years ago? Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. You think people still listen to this? No. Well, I don't know. We, we never put anything out anymore. Oh. <laughs> I was told <laughs> twice last week by two different people they... Where where are we? They miss us. So I feel obligated to say something worth a little bit of something. Right. So I think we should have somebody from SAP on to talk about some of that stuff. And if you yeah. have ideas of what you're interested in hearing about, send them in. Um, I personally would like to hear about where we are with Chris Reports for Enterprise. That sort of came up, and um, it's still around, but I don't know what's going on with it. I think we should start with the wonderful Jane Landry and ask Jane to sit down and talk frankly with us about what's happening in the dev organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we should just caveat, though, too, that we'll, we'll take topic suggestions from anyone except Chris Pohl. <laughs> if you're listening still. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, don't tell Chris. <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's a good place to wrap up. We, we, we need a place to leap from, and uh, this is a good, good dip of a toe back in the water of podcasting. Hot tub. So, is this the Chris Mahana Quanzica episode? It must be. I don't feel very... Yeah, time. We could offend someone much closer to the actual holidays. Yeah, there's always next Tuesday. I'll bring, I'll bring me as a stormtrooper. If you guys want. Let's see. How does he look? Does he, does he look kind of menacing? There you go. Hey, dude. What's up, guys? I don't really play with dolls all day. He doesn't move. He's on a, he's a statue. He's just going to go off camera. All right. On that note, uh... Guys, it was good to record again. Uh, somebody tell us what to talk about again next time. Sounds good. I need a, I need a witty closer, Jamie. Ba baguette. Sheep boy. Sheep, sheep and baguettes. <laughs> get, your, uh, get your abstract in for annual conference. Stay classy, sheep and baguettes. In the grandma's pink chair. <laughs> Was it really your grandma's? All right. <laughs> I don't even know. What I'm so I'm just, Bye. You've got to lop off the end of some of this. You think? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll stop. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by EV Technologies. Visit us on the net at savethecms.com. Day Slayer!